Hey there, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and today's project is part of my first official solo blog as a member of the Elizabeth Craft Designs coloring design team. So I'm thrilled to be able to show you how I made this really colorful and a little bit wacky birthday card for my niece Hannah's seventh birthday. So I stamped down all of the stamps in the birthday party stamp set in Memento Tuxedo Black Ink onto some 85 pound white soft finish cardstock. I am going to color these with uh, the Spectrum Noir markers. So I needed some alcohol friendly ink. So just bear that in mind if you're going to use Spectrum Noirs or Copics. I also don't use the balloon in the upper right. And then there's like an asterisk in the middle between the bird's legs on the bottom. And then there's a little grouping of three feathers on the lower right that I don't use either. So if you're gonna reproduce this card, you do not need to stamp those stamps for this. With my coloring, I used sort of four groupings of colors. I've got some yellow oranges, I've got uh, pinks, I've got blues, and then I've got some greens. So for my yellows that I'm coloring now, I start off with CT2, then I add in some shadows with CT4, deepen the shadows with OR1, and then I blend it all back out with CT2, which is the lightest shade. And then for the wings, I wanted to go from blue to yellow. So blue, green, yellow, white actually. So I start off with TB1 and then to blend the yellow into the green, I'm scribbling the blue onto an acrylic block and then swiping my yellow marker through it to get sort of the, the middle tone between the blue and the yellow. And then it eventually wears off the marker and goes to yellow as I'm coloring it. It didn't seem dark enough, so I did re-scribble the blue with TB3, which is a little darker, and then repeat that method again to get the blend from the blue to the green to the yellow. And then I take my blender pen and blend that out to uh, white, blend the yellow out to the white. I did clean my yellow marker off there a little bit on the side just to get any uh, blue contamination off of it. And you do need to do that if you use that method. Uh, his nose is... Oh, CT2 and OR1, so I just blend those together to give him a little bit of shading. And then the pinks I used on his crown are BP6, BP2, and PL1. And that is the same combination that I'm going to use on the second bird's body that you'll see here. And I'm going to blend these now. On the crown, I just kind of colored them in one by one. But here I'm going to blend them. So I start off with my lightest shade, which is PL1, add in shadows with BP2, deepen those shadows a, just a little bit with the darkest shade, which is BP6, and then I blend the whole thing out with PL1. Now, sometimes when you blend it, you might lose some of the depth of the shadows, and that's what happened here. So I go back with my BP2, which is the middle shade, and I add some of those shadows back in, kind of make them a little bit bigger, and then I blend it just slightly with the PL1. So he has some dimension on him. His wings I'm blending from yellow to orange. So I start off with CT2, added in OR1, and then I added in a little CR10, which is an even deeper orange, to get like a really nice gradation from the yellow to the orange. And I blend the whole thing out with the CT2 to get that nice variation of color. And I did the same thing for his beak. Well, not quite. I did OR10 and CR10 for his beak. Now his bow tie are my blue tones, which are TB1, the lightest, TB3, the middle shade, and TB5, which is the deepest. I will use those exact same colors here on the bird. And so this is basically my method for coloring with Spectrum Noirs and Copics. I lay down the lightest color first, which in this case is TB1, add some shading with TB3, the middle tone, deepen the shadows with TB5, which is the darkest tone, if I need to, I will make those shadows a little bit bigger with the mid-tone, which I did here, TB3, and then I blend the whole thing back out with the lightest shade, TB1. And so that's normally how I do it. I'll use like three tones. Sometimes I'll only use two as I do with the greens in this little project. And then here I actually use four because I wanted to get a little bit of purple in there. So I added some TB1 to the very end of his uh, wing and tail feathers and then blended so I went PL1 to BP2 to BP6 to TB1 to get that gradation from light pink to dark pink to a tiny bit of purple, just to get a little bit of extra depth on his wing. And then the accessories I kind of all colored with variations of the yellows, the pinks, the blues, or the greens. 
these presents I'm coloring with mostly blue, yellow, and pink. And then I decide I do need an extra color. So that's when the green comes into play. As you can see here, I've just colored the presents and the polka dots with the BP6. And now I'm doing the, the one present and the ribbon with CT2. And here's my green, which is CG1. And then I have add a little shading to that with DG3. And those are the two greens that I use for this. I don't add in a third just because there isn't a whole lot of depth needed for the items that I colored with the green. But the green is a little, it's nice to have. It's a little bit of extra pizzazz to this little project. <laughs> and so that's kind of my method for how I colored all of the elements. And then I die cut them out with the matching dyes. Now I did color the happy birthday saying with my distress markers because the Spectrum Noir nibs were just too thick for the tiny tiny little letters for me to color them so i grabbed matching distress markers at least as close as i could get so i used picked raspberry tumbled glass twisted citron and squeezed lemonade in that order so i did colored one letter each in each color in that order until the entire happy bird day saying was complete and then i die cut that out as well and it's so cute. Like, I just, I love it. And when you see them all together, I just think they're so cute. It's a great, great stamp set. And the dies are super, super easy to line up and work with also. I love the dies. So just wanted to let you know. Now for the card base, you need to cut a hundred pound piece, a piece of 100 pound soft finish cardstock in white at seven and a quarter by five and a half. And then you score it and fold it in half. Then you take the big piece from the spiral circle pull card die set and you line up those little nibs that are sticking off that center silver bar with the line, the score line in the middle, the fold, and then you die cut it out. And so the die cuts in the score line to fold this front panel back. It die cuts out the circle, as you see there. And so it's super easy to just fold this front panel back. And once you have folded it back, you have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch A2 size card. So standard size for the US for uh, greeting cards. And it also cuts these little tabs in the back so that you can just keep it closed. And it's super, super fun and really, really easy to make. Now I cut some matching panels for the front and the sides. So those are two and an eighth by five and a half. That is out of Whisper Blue soft finish cardstock. And to cut the circle out of the front, which you will need to do, I lined up the die. I put the panel over the front, the solid panel, and then I lined up the die with the circle and the fold to get it in the right place. And then I just taped it down to the blue cardstock, and that's how I cut it out and got the perfect line of, got it lined up perfectly with the circle. Now, here's the really, really fun part, which is adding glitter. So to do this, I use the hearts section, the side of the hearts and paws stencil. And you can see it kind of curves. So I have turned it a little bit to get the curve to fill up that blue panel on the side. And it does it pretty perfectly on the back panel. And then I'm taping it down with some low tech tape. You do need to get it adhered down pretty well because um, I'm gonna use gel medium to fill this in. So this, this is the gel medium and I'm using my small paint palette to spread it across the openings in the heart. And because the gel medium is somewhat thin, it does like to slip under the stencil a little bit. So if after you have put glitter on it, you notice that your hearts don't look exactly correctly because maybe some gel medium got where it wasn't supposed to go and now you have glitter sticking where it doesn't need to be, take your craft knife and just scrape it off really carefully right then and there before it dries and it comes off no problem and that is a really easy to do. I had that happen on the front so not a problem. So I am covering this with uh, silk microfine glitter in Diva which is a really fun uh, fuchsia. And I'm just going to set it aside to dry and then once it is totally dry I wipe the whole thing off with a soft brush to clean it completely off. Now you will need to cover up some of the hearts on that on the front panel with some tape because you only want solid hearts stenciled onto your panel. So just remember that. And now for your extra pieces, you will cut out two circles in, in out of matching pattern paper. So one circle is solid and then the second circle has the spiral in it cut into it as well. You'll need two hearts and two balloons from Rosebud, Sunflower and Spring Green Soft Finish cardstock. And then I use the 
strings die from the winter mitten set and I die cut three of those out of a uh, rich black cardstock and use those as balloon tail balloon strings I just cut the bows off and they became balloon strings so it's really easy now it's advisable to put some clear double-sided adhesive sheet on the back of the balloons and the strings before you cut them out so that they turns them into stickers and makes them really easy to adhere down later you do not want to do that however to the hearts because you don't need adhesive all over those to adhere everything together I right now I'm using the 10 millimeter double-sided adhesive tape and putting down the pattern the solid circle that out of pattern paper into the middle of the white circle on the front and I'm going to put the bird and the cake on top of that I do have to trim a little tag off the presents to go in the lower left corner which is kind of sad because it's really cute but I'll use it later and then two balloons go in the upper right and you do need to be able to see those above the white circle now on the inside you're going to adhere the pattern piece with the spiral cut into it into the middle of the back circle but only put adhesive on the outer edge of that. The circle needs to remain free. And once it is dry, you're going to put some really strong adhesive onto the center of the spiral. I used a glue dot, kind of balled up. Fold the card back onto it, and then that adheres your spiral to the inside of the card. And then I just adhered all these other extra pieces down, as you see. Now the balloons and the balloon strings were already stickers, so they were super easy to put down. And then I just used a combination of the clear double-sided adhesive tape and some glue pen to get the birds and the flower and the little hat and the saying all in, in place and adhered down well. It is helpful to score along the fold where the bird tail and the saying overlap the fold so that the adhesive really sticks and, and they fold really easily once it's all put together. Now to adhere your hearts to the spiral, you're going to take a glue pen and just put some glue only on the parts that overlap the, spir overlap the spiral, obviously. <laughs> and you'll wind up with one extra heart, and mine was yellow, so I took that and I put it over the base of the spiral where the balloon strings come together. So the two balloons on the left should be connected to the bird's tail that's in the circle and the four balloons on the right connect down to the base of the spiral and then you cover that with the little yellow heart make sure you don't overlap the blue panel with your heart however because if you do you'll see it from the front and you don't want that then i took a copic liner pen and i just drew in some balloon strings over the little necks of the balloons and then i added a little bow to where the balloons tie onto the bird's tail to make it look sort of real and cute. <laughs> and then on the front, I took a pencil and I drew some strings from the balloons in the upper right down to the cake to connect them to the cake. And then once I was happy with how I'd drawn those, I went over that with the Copic liner to make it look like they are connected to the cake on the front and I drew a little knot onto the candle. So from the front, it looks like they're connected to the cake. And then when you open it, it looks like they're connected to the spiral. So really, really cute, super cute effect. And that is the completed project. And it was really, really fun. And even though it probably seems a little complicated, it actually wasn't. Most of the work is done by the die set and those stamps, which are unto themselves really great, along with the paper, which makes it super easy. The coloring helps, of course, but overall, um, most of the work is done by the products, which are amazing. So I hope you will give it a shot. Um, I get, and I hope you're excited about these stamps that are coming out because these Happy Birthday ones and all the others are really, really great. So please visit the Elizabeth Craft Designs blog and check out what is coming soon. Thank you so much for watching. As always, there is a link to the supply list in the video description below and on the Elizabeth Craft Designs blog. You can find more from me on my blog, blacksheep303.com. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would be thrilled if you would. Thank you so much. Have a great day.